Hey Wolfpack, and welcome back. It's finally Sunday, and tonight I'm reading How to Access the Forbidden Wiki by Mr. Outlaw. With that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even laying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. We all love Wikipedia, don't we? A seemingly endless source of information, all consolidated on a well-formatted, visually pleasing website. And despite what your teacher might tell you, I can guarantee you that just about nobody is trying to rewrite history pages with false information. Nobody has the time for that, nor does anybody care enough to do it. Beyond research and general curiosity, there's a ton of fun stuff you can do on that site. For example, there's a Wikipedia game, where you start on one topic and then click on related hyperlinks until you reach the pre-specified designation page. Also, did you know that if you go on a Wikipedia page relating to any topic, click on the first hyperlink and repeat the process? You'll eventually find yourself in a loop that always directs you back to the page for philosophy. Deep stuff, really. Now, that's all fun and whatnot. But did you know that there's something else you can do on Wikipedia? A ritual of sorts. I recommend proceeding with caution. There's a certain level of risk involved when pursuing something like this. Would I recommend it? Not really. So why am I talking about it at all? Well, I'll explain that later. This is what you'll need. A device with internet access, preferably something mobile like a laptop or a smartphone. Make sure that none of your personal information is stored on this device. If it's a smartphone, take out the SIM card, delete all your contacts, social media apps, photos, etc. This is not an optional step. Internet access, preferably public, like a library or a large credit coffee shop. Obviously not so feasible right now, so I'd wait until the virus dies down. You can also just use your home internet, not recommended though. A weapon, bodyguard, vehicle. Optional, but also not at the same time. You'll only need these things for reasons I'll explain later, but more often than not, you won't be needing these things at all. 15 out of 100 times, I'd say. Still, better safe than sorry. Try and pack some heat. Here's what you'll need to do. Sit down at a library, coffee shop, university campus, or any place with public Wi-Fi. Start off by visiting an extremely popular wiki page. For example, Michael Jordan, World War II, Elon Musk, Google, etc. Now, here's where you gotta exert a bit of brain power. You're gonna have to traverse from this popular page to an obscure page that has hardly been seen at all in comparison. But don't go searching up something like creepiest Wikipedia pages or most bizarre Wikipedia pages and try to get there. If those pages are on a list, then they've probably received a lot of traffic. You'll need to find a page about something truly unknown, like some unheard of Romanian folk singer from the 1960s who's only released two songs before dying in their 30s or something. Doing this is harder than you might think. The page truly has to be something that very few people are aware of or would bother to learn about. Once you've found a page that you deem suitably obscure and unseen, You'll have to click on the Wikipedia homepage, find another popular topic, and repeat the process. Maybe three, four, or even five times at the very max. But don't worry about clicking pages endlessly. You'll know that you've done it right when you come across a seemingly blank page. The wiki symbol and dark side options will still be there, but the page itself will be devoid of any pictures or text, except for the title of the page at the top, that is. It'll say information limit, followed by a string of numbers. Remember that string, you'll need it later. Also, don't close the browser, you've done it. The ritual has officially begun. At this point, you'll have to leave the location you accessed it at. For the love of God, just don't go back into your house. Get into your car or walk on foot to a remote location without internet access. You can't just be disconnected from a network. There should be no networks available to scan for at all. Make yourself comfortable and open that information limit page again. Hit refresh. Another page should load up. Despite the lack of connection, it'll be a login screen with a single prompt. Enter access point. 
Enter the string of numbers you memorized earlier, except for the last two digits. Most people who try this just type in the string as it is. Do not do this or you'll be met with a horrible fate. Pay attention and refrain from screwing it up. Once this is done correctly, you'll be directed to something that looks like the Wikipedia homepage, but just a bit different. Now, I'm not quite sure what kind of site this is, or where even it originates from. A lot of people just call it the Forbidden Wiki, myself included. I need to note something of great importance here. If the page that loaded up is not in English or whatever language that you originally accessed it from, then click off immediately and go home. You shouldn't try and subject yourself to any of the images that may pop up on the pages you visit. They aren't meant for you, aren't meant for human perception. If you glance upon these images, you'll end up with a fate worse than the one that you'd get if you entered the entire string into the prompt. And that one is bad to begin with. You're curious, but don't take the risk. But if the page is in the language you recognize, then go ahead and proceed. You'll notice that the Wikipedia symbol will now be a bit different than the one you're familiar with. It might be a different shape, a different color, different symbols perhaps. More often than not, it'll look more ominous, more sinister, I suppose. You need to keep in mind that the articles and topics you might stumble across on this site do not exist in our world. They are not something we need to be worried about. Don't stay up at night thinking about what you'll see. As far as we need to be concerned, they're not real. From this point, you'll have free range to explore as you please. Eh, somewhat. Be sure not to look around more than 15 pages or so, spending less than a minute on each. If you linger around forbidden knowledge for too long, they will know you're looking, and they'll be sure to look for you as well. This is information that you shouldn't be privy to, and they'll make sure it remains that way. Who are they, exactly? Anybody who has a solid answer to that question likely isn't around to divulge it. Just know that they are not from this plane of reality. That they possess far more strength and knowledge that you could ever imagine. Don't think you'll be able to evade, or God forbid, try and fight back against them. Even the most decorated government field agent, who's been through hell and back, wouldn't come close to succeeding. Humans that try to overstep the boundaries of what they're supposed to know are nothing but pesky bugs that need to be exterminated to them. Or, in the worst case, bugs that need to be made an example out of first. But don't be too scared. Like I said, just don't linger on any one page for too long, and don't visit too many. If you do this, you'll more or less be able to bypass their detection. But don't think this means that you're somehow getting the best of them. You'd need to read and analyze these forbidden articles for upwards of hours before understanding what they truly mean and the ramifications of their existence in the multiverse. With less than a minute of exposure, you'll only be able to gain a surface level understanding of the subjects at best, and they hardly care about that. However, there is a way to legitimately bypass their detection, enabling you to look at the articles for a longer duration of time. But these involve complicated strategies that require extensive knowledge in both programming and arcane occult rituals. And even then, the risk is still astronomically high. Again, not recommended. You might be wondering why you can't just take pictures and look over them afterwards for however long you want. Well, I suppose you could. But it doesn't make any difference. They'll still know you're looking and react accordingly. So why bother bringing any kind of weapon, you might ask? Well, it's not to fight back against them. Like I said, that's a fruitless effort. No, the weapons are for the lurkers. Sometimes, if you're unlucky, around 15% of the time, like I said, your mere digital presence on the Forbidden Wiki will alert them to your location, and it's something that can't be helped. But even though the lurkers aren't in any way affiliated with them, they do have comparable goals. They don't want you looking at the information either, but unlike them, the lurkers don't want you to have any kind of awareness of the subjects at all. You won't be able to anticipate them. They might fall out of a tree if you're in a forest. They might step out of a dark corner if you're in an abandoned building. They might crawl out of a lake. You get the gist of it. You won't see them coming. 
Some will be more humanoid in appearance. Some will look more unfamiliar. They will try and kill you in any way possible, should you keep looking at the site. One sure way to guarantee your survival in these situations is to just close the browser, drop your device, and take off. If you do this, they'll have no reason to chase you down. However, if you don't want to keep looking, the lurkers aren't impossible to dispose of. In fact, if you're armed well and have moderate combat experience, you should be able to wipe them out relatively easy and then continue exploring the site. Conversely, you could hire somebody else to deal with them on your behalf while you continue browsing. I'd recommend this option strongly. Like I said, you can't stay on one page for too long, and if the lurkers start giving you trouble, then you might be a bit screwed. I'm not quite sure what the deal is with the lurkers either. One theory is that they're simply interdimensional agents and or mercenaries hired by a third party who wants to protect their information from outsider eyes. But then who is this third party? And why are they trying to protect the info? This is why I don't bother with theorizing. There's simply too much that we can't know. Well, now that's all out of the way. Let me tell you about some of the pages I've come across on the Forbidden Wiki. Keep in mind that I had under a minute to glance over these, and despite having a fairly good memory, I'll only be able to describe so much. The Great Lakes Incident the Great Lakes Incident was a naval battle that took place across the five Great Lakes on the Canadian-US border from 2007 to 2011. Reports about a mysterious ship rising out of the water alerted Canadian authorities in the late 2010. The belligerents were of an unusual nature, able to withstand conventional weaponry, possessing multiple heads, considered in between amphibian and humanoid, finally resolved using firebombs and chemical weapons. Inhabitants of the Bermuda Triangle The beings living on these small, scattered islands are extremely hostile towards human contact, reported to be able to fly, causing trouble for aircraft traveling through, believed to have originated from a large underwater volcano. The Grand Canyon Void The Grand Canyon Void is a hole in the ground in northwest Arizona, measuring approximately 4.6 meters in diameter. Hikers reported staring into the hole for hours on end, before they were dragged away from it by park authorities. An average of 12 hikers were reported to have jumped into it during the month of March, with their bodies turning up in different countries. Mr. Dream Mr. Dream is an Australian DJ from Perth. His self-proclaimed style is known as internal trance. People at his live shows have been reported to experience moments of incredible euphoria before disemboweling each other in the crowd. The manhunt is ongoing, with his latest show reported to have occurred in June 2019 at an underground venue in Paris. The Acroyd Mansion The Acroyd Mansion is a large estate located on the outskirts of Houston, Texas, belonging to the Acroyd family. Famously known for being the founding members of the cult known as the Dawn of the Collapsing Moon, 77 attempts have been made to infiltrate the house resulting in 587 officer casualties. Only one known member of the Acroyd family has been neutralized. The members are known to conduct rituals involving biological transformations of the human body. These creatures react in accordance with lunar cycles, exhibiting the most violent tendencies when the moon appears early in its first quarter. Channel 51 News Channel 51 News is a controversial news station that broadcasts on Channel 51 between 3 and 4 a.m. The reports represented on the program have been considered nonsensical and disturbing to the viewers watching. Sometimes, the hosts have reported incidents that have not occurred up until that point, only for these incidents to transpire one week after. As was the case with the Tokyo Massacre, the location in the channel broadcast out of remains impossible to pinpoint. As hard as it may be to believe, these are some examples of more normal pages on the wiki. Some of the other ones I've seen are downright screwed. The Man Inside Your Head The Man Inside Your Head is an arcane entity that exists within your subconscious. His intentions are malicious, and a good portion of your mental capacity is used to suppress him from escaping at any given time. Don't let him escape. Eye in the Sky the eye in the sky is a large eye measuring approximately 4,400 meters in diameter that appears in the sky every so often, 
usually during violent storms. When it appears, it is advised not to look at it under any circumstances. The only exception to this rule is for those who have been forsaken and absolutely need to. You'll know if you need to. The corner of the basement. The corner in your basement is that one dark spot in your basement tucked away in that far corner. No matter how much light you shine on it, it will never illuminate, and you'll never know what's lurking within it. You better figure out what it is soon. The Snowstorm Angel. The Snowstorm Angel is that figure you see in your backyard during heavy snowstorms. You'll think your eyes are playing a trick on you, and that your senses are somehow being distorted by the snowfall. But make no mistake, it's there. People often assume its nature to be benevolent. Given its name, the assumption is incorrect. These kinds of articles were always shorter in length. In fact, what I described above pretty much represented the entirety of the text. These articles all included pictures as well. I regret ever looking at any of them. You might be wondering why I'm telling you about the Forbidden Wiki at all, along with how to get there. It's contradictory. As contradictory as it may seem, this is a precautionary tale. Most people will read this and believe it to be fake, or simply lack the time, energy, or motivation to go through with it. Good, be one of those people. But then, there's the people who don't fit that bill. The thrill seekers, so to speak. These are the ones who will look for it no matter what. Eventually, they'll find another set of instructions written by somebody else, but one that might not include a proper warning. One that doesn't tell the whole story. I am here to give you that warning. Don't do this. I thought I was safe just browsing around. I followed other rules. I hired Hitman off the dark web to accompany me in case the lurkers showed up. I always made sure to not overstay my welcome on any of the pages, in order to keep myself hidden from them. In reality, the Forbidden Wiki is a strange and complicated place. You may think that you've experienced enough and that you figured out all of its tricks, but don't underestimate it. We were never meant to lay our eyes on something like this. I've stumbled upon a particular page the last time I paid a visit to the site. This was the page that ruined everything. The title was simply a phone number, a phone number that contained my area code. Here was the description. I remember this one verbatim. This is a number that will be calling you in a few days. You are obligated to answer his call and follow his instructions. If you refuse, he will come to you. You will only have two chances. Here's the thing. I live in an apartment, so I don't have a basement. I'm pretty sure there's no demonic entity living inside my head. I've never seen a giant eye in the sky. I'm in the south, so snowfall is rare and sparse at best. Up until a point, the shit I've seen on the wiki has been 100% separate and disconnected from my real life. I really thought I had no cause for concern. But I did get a call. A call from a number I really hoped I wouldn't see again. I let it ring through without picking up. One last chance. Thanks for listening, Wolfpack. If you want to submit your own story, the links for my email and subreddit will be down below. I've also created a Discord, so if you want to join that, the link will be in the description down below as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And with that said, have beautiful nightmares, and I will see you next time.